Dino Trace. Uh, so I'm look up, I'm, I look after the solution and the team of technical guys uh, in ASEAN. So just a question, have anyone heard of Dino Trace before? Well, okay, I'm happy. Okay, if not, have anyone heard of CompuWare? Right, so, so we actually spin off as another company. Uh, so now we are actually branded as Dynatrace. So our key forte is really into managing application performance. Right? So just a little bit details about ourselves, uh, about our company. Uh, so some get some of the stuff out of the way first. Uh, so some of the major global customers, uh, such as Apple, eBay, uh, even Facebook, they are our customers. Um, in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, we are the leader for five, in fact, coming to six consecutive years in the latest quarter. Right? Uh, we are also ranked number one by Gartner in terms of the market share. Right? Uh, what about locally in this part of the world, in ASEAN? So some of the major customers, let's say for Singapore, uh, all the three telcos, and one Singtel startup, uh, governments like IRAS, uh, you know, HDB. Right? So today, when you file your tax, Actually, at the back, it's actually running our solution. So everything that you do, not the, not the sensitive part, but every click in terms of the response time is actually captured by us, by our solution. Uh, last year, right, October, we actually have a three years partnership with IDA. So what it means is they are actually using our solution to do a benchmark and performance monitoring of the cloud service provider. Right? just for your information, that was last year. So what is common within all these companies and all these partners that we're working with? Right? Why, why is APM important? So by the way, APM stands for Application Performance Management. Right? There's a change in the terms now, so people are actually moving into digital performance management. Right? The reason for that is very simple, because we are in a digital world. Right? There's a digital evolution. It's an only channel, so people are using mobile phone, and they may switch to a PC or a tablet to do a transactions, right? So it's all about digital moving forward. Now if you look at the chart here, oh, my pointer is working, right? On the Y axis, so that represents the speed in terms of the number of deployments, right? World are more complex now, there's more and more deployments. Now that also represents the amount of time that requires to identify problems. Right. Also, maybe you can represent the number of projects you are holding today. Right. Now, on the well, x-axis is the time. So, as you can see, as more and more complexity, I'm oh, sorry, as more and more deployment, right, complexity increases. Same goes for expectation, whether it's your customers or it's your business users. Right, expectation increases. But what is coming down over here is actually visibility and control. And as a result of that, because of the lack of visibility. Right, cost goes up. So in terms of more people requires to, to troubleshoot a problem, for example, or to do deployment. Or more cost involved in terms of scaling, more and more infrastructure required because I do not have enough visibility. I will just scale accordingly. Right? So that increases. And that's the reason why. So let me so so where we come in is to really to help to minimize that visibility gap. Right? Help organization to minimize that so that they can reduce the cost eventually. So all this Marketing talk aside, so why is it really needed? So let me use an example here. So does this come familiar to any of you? Very simple, right? <laughs> oh, beside that. Okay, just a CPU utilization, right? Maybe for one of the server. So let me ask you this question: What happens if your CPU goes up above eighty-five percent? What do you normally do? So is it a good thing? Or is it a bad thing? Okay, another example here. What if it's only less than 25%? Now, what do you do? Good, bad, actionable? Now, let me give you another contextual information here. Now, what if, when it's 25%, your response time from the user point of view, every click is taking more than 20 seconds? And vice versa, CPU is at 85%, but response time is two, 2 seconds. So now, which one is good? Right? For the 85%, it means that my application is performing optimally. Right? It's really using the full capacity of my infrastructure. And therefore, I'm able to deliver the right experience to my end user. Well, on the other hand, 
it may be 25%, but my users are not getting a good experience. So today, you need to have that level, uh, another layer of information to really support your case, right? And also, basically, it's all about visibility from the end user point of view. So what is actually needed? As I mentioned, application visibility, right? Where there's two steps, right? The first step is to know your user experience. Because once you know, then you know where is the areas which you need to improve. Now the second area is, that's where you talk about scaling. So for example, if auto scaling, <coughs> right, capability, right? But only after you optimize, then you look into auto scaling. Rather than scaling it, even when the user are getting very good exp experience, for example. So what it means by end user experience? So what you are seeing here is a world map. So this is actually a live, okay, it, this is a slice, but what we do is we do it live, right? So this is the live dashboard that actually look at the user experience. Now you see a lot of bubbles over there? So the green represents satisfied users, right? There's a bit of yellow that's tolerating, so mix happy, not so happy, maybe tolerating your experience. And the one in red is frustrated user. But how do we do that, right? Because response time is just one element, but we also take into consideration the actual user visits, right? For example, if he visit your applications and he did maybe 10 steps. Now, out of the 10 steps, what is the overall experience? So does he experience any error? Is the last step very, taking very long time, which may affect the overall user index or user experience score, right? With those information, then you actually plot this uh, you know, graphical view over here. Right? And of course, you want to be able to understand where the users are coming from, because sometimes poor performance may not be your infrastructure or AWS, right? servers in the cloud. It could be the user location, uh, where they are coming from, or it could be the devices that they're using. So we want to be able to understand and identify whether they are using a mobile devices or desktop, etc. Right. Now, once you acknowledge that's a problem, what's the next step, right? Then you want, be, want to be able to trace a user from the moment they click, right? To the browser, to any third party call, third party's call that they're making, for example, Facebook, etc., Google Analytics, and all the way to your <coughs> web, app, MQ, Tipco, whichever, to the database and back. Trace them end to end, right? Understanding the complex interaction. So, it's, it's like a ping when you do a trace route from the network point of view. Now this is like a trace route from the application point of view, right? Where you trace exactly which host is the one that's not giving the right experience. Now each of this represents a host, a instance if it's Java, right? And there's three circular line here, circular thing here. So one represents the response time or whether there's any failure in the transactions. Now the one at the bottom represents the system health, like CPU memory, I hope. And last but not least, the other one represents the process health. So things like garbage collection. If it's a database, things like connection pool, you say exhausted, etc. Now what this does actually gives you a helps you to correlate, you know, have a unified view, understanding when the response time is impacted. Is it due to my infrastructure or is it due to a configuration? <coughs> Right? It's a bird eye view to give you that end-to-end -end perspective. And of course, last but not least, go all the way down to the code level details. Right? So in the past, when um, IT guys try to troubleshoot a problem, they have to, they have to look at logs, right? look for exceptions in the logs. Now everything is interrelated from the flow diagram earlier and then down to the exception, down to the code level exception. So this is what we do. Right, end to end, every single user, every single click, all the time. So let me illustrate that with a case study. Uh, this is a customer story. Uh, this is not from this part of the world. This is from actually US, America. So let me share that case study with you. So just call this company X Y Z, right? They, so they actually provide a SaaS based business using AWS, uh, EC2 Cloud, uh, because it's a SaaS based business. So customer satisfaction is very important because seriously, their investment is only subscription, right? They don't really invest or have on-premises kind of infrastructure, uh, infrastructure in place, right? So it's important for this company to ensure that 
uh, their customer are always satisfied with the uh, user experience. So the incident here is after one deployment, so alert was actually triggered to inform the operation team that the user experience was de degrading. So we remember the world map, right, where I talk about satisfied user and all stuff. So they use one of those metrics to actually trigger that alert so that they become more proactive, right, before the system actually really goes down, for example. Right, so let's see what happens. So first, they start from this view again. Right, so this is a worldwide distribution of the end user experience using their applications. And let me zoom in a little bit here. Now what you see up there is the average response time from the user point of view. So every click, what's the average? It's about less than one second, which is very good so that not really an issue, right? But that's the problem because when you look at average, everything is average out, right? Therefore, it's very important for you to really look deeper than that. But at least one thing you can confirm is there's no meltdown on the system. Right? So it may be happening to a pocket of users, but not everyone. So everything in general is still fine. But still, it's impacting users. Now, therefore, they start looking at the user experience across the globe here. Now, as I mentioned, the red represents frustrated users. So users are not happy because it's slow, right? because it's not available. And it seems to be happening across the uh, entire globe. So you can actually see everywhere, Africa, South America, uh, you know, Australia, Asia, everything, every one of them you can see the red over there. Right. Maybe the day before the deployment, everything is green or yellow. So do you know that there's some information, uh, some problems, and it's impacting everyone? So what's the next step? So they say, uh, let's look at internally in the data center, all my transactions. What is the health from a transaction inter-server point of view? So half a million transactions actually flowing across the entire system here. Right, so this is actually an older version of our uh, flow diagram. But uh, what you can see here is all the different instances and all the interaction between the servers as well, right, within the uh, Amazon cloud. Any problem is stopped here? Right, so you can also see the response time right, for half a million transactions on each of the servers and instances. Actually, on average again, right, because you're looking at so many transactions, everything looks good as well. Right. Again, based on this alone, we can confirm that generally everything is still running fine. It's probably a specific request that's actually de delivering a poor experience. Right. So time to look at a problematic service request rather than from the bigger picture. So bigger picture, we know that there's no issues. So let's dive deeper into that. So uh, that was the dashboard that they used, so which we have created for them. So all this can be easily created based on the view. Uh, based on the requirements. Uh, what this shows you in a nutshell is all the response time at a different tier. For example, the database tier, the number of checks, all the service request response time, CPU utilization, etc. Right? Just zooming to this area here. Right? So we notice that one of the service requests, right, web services call for example, right, is 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 not performing correctly. Right? Response time is fluctuating and very high. <coughs> At the same time, <coughs> when they look at the CPU, so one of the CPU, uh, one of the CPU on the server is actually going beyond 80%. Right? Remember my example earlier? Right? If it's 80%, so time to add another server. Right? But that's not the case here. So now they want to understand, are these correlated? So they actually look at this service request and understand what is the CPU um, at time taken within the service request. And they notice that the CPU within that service request is actually mostly doing XML, SS, uh, you know, IoT transformation into document requests and things like that. Right? So they identify the function. Right? They know what is actually taking up the CPU. But this is the operation team. Right? Operation team, for them to know to this level of information, I think it's probably good enough. Right? So now how the different team collaborate now is now all this information is actually kept in the system. They just need to export the information or they just provide a link to the apps team. Right? Apps team can just open up the session and then do a playback. In a way you call it a playback, but basically it's open a safe session. Right? And and what this means is because everything is captured, right? Especially 
how often you are faced with intermittent issues when you try to replicate you can't do it again right this is the time where this will help so X team want to take from a different approach now they know which service request is causing a problem but the X owner he want to understand from a user a customer point of view what is the actual experience so what you're seeing here is all the different users from different countries which is actually using this current application so you can actually see the location we must off the user ID but we can actually capture the user ID as well so we can really relate to a user this time you can also see the, the how long they actually spend the time in the system now for a specific user if I click so first of all I know that it's using Chrome for example uh, from Indiana uh, Indiana Police in the United States so I know these are my frustrated users so based on this user, I'm actually able to see the individual clicks performed by that user along with his response uh, experience in terms of response time. Right? For each of the actions, I'm able to capture whether they are satisfied or frustrated. Now this actually tells the X people exactly what is the actions or steps that they took before the error occurs. So now they can actually trace why the user are getting a poor experience. Now since we know which are the pages, right, now we can actually focus on just that document. So basically this is actually trying to, to download the documents right, by the end users. And it's taking a long time for them to do that. Right. So now they want to just focus on this user actions. Right? So understand as the exact click which was impacted. So earlier when I show you the big picture, like spider web, so that is based on averaging on a millions of half a million transactions. Now we just focus on this one request. So now the picture is slightly clearer now. Right? Based on that one request, this is the interaction in the backend within the cloud. Now one observation here, just point here. Now we can actually see based on this request, 60% of the time which I actually spent on this box here. The other observation is there are multiple read requests to this document request service. So they know that they are using the Elastic Cache. But is it the case where it's not caching? Right, so now there's a lot more visibility for the X people as well. Uh, so upon further investigation, they realize that there's, there's actually no problem with the cache at all. So nothing to do with AWS at all. Right? But it's the way they implement the methods. So they did a lot of reading, but they forgot to write. They forgot to cache it. Right? Therefore, they always try to break from nothing. Right? That's the problem here. That's why you can see multiple requests going to the same server. And that development is able to look into the code level, uh, eventually able to identify the root cause of the problem. Right? So, a very quick case studies here. Uh, we also have a lot of local case studies. If you are interested, feel free to talk to our guys. Uh, but the conclusion is, well, what it does based on that case studies, right? customers was able to identify uh, a problem, uh, sorry, uh, customer as in AWS customer. <laughs> Identify a problem in production which had a big user impact. Now, the operation team was able to identify exactly where and what is causing the CPU to be exhausted. Last but not least, application team was able to find the root cause, okay, or by managing application performance. Uh, by the way, we are on the marketplace. Yeah. We are already on the marketplace, so you can actually just, uh, you know, so this is basically the servers running our APM solution. Right? Of course, you need to install the agents on your, on your application or your server. Right? If you want to use us, trial. Yes? Uh, on that marketplace slide, yes. you had to bring your own license. Do you yes. also do uh, hourly rental in the marketplace? Mm. In the pipe, on in the pipe. in the pipeline. Yeah, actually, it's classic. In the pipeline. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, mark this. Okay. <laughs> but you can also download for free. Wow. So first of all, it's a trial. But if you run it just on your local machine, it's a uh, free forever. Right. Whatever you see earlier down to the code level, you can run it on your local machine, free forever. Right. Just take note that. Uh, another thing I want to mention is we are actually having a user conference on the 30th of July. Uh, this is where the occasion where we actually invite our customer to speak. So not just myself or anyone, but basically customers like 
I'm one, you know, for example. Right? They will be speaking about their experience with APM. Okay, not confirmed, but I know. <laughs> right, so feel free to register. If you need more information, just uh, speak to me after this. Ah, okay. Another item, one last item. On the 22nd of July, so regarding this free trial, if you need someone to guide you along, we're actually doing a made up just for that. We call it a personal uh, free trial test drive, uh, which my colleague King White over there, he'll be driving that session. So we actually go through with you on how to actually install this guy, Dynatrace. Okay, so that's all from me. Any questions? Okay, now look for us uh, after this. Uh, we are still around. Thank you very much.